Uh, my name's Craig, I run a, a clothing and coaching basketball company called Chain at Apparel. I was born in the 80s, sort of raised in the 90s, and that's when I fell in love with hip-hop and basketball. So I've tried to put the two things together, what I've grown up on and what I love, trying to put it out there in a the brand. And there's only so much you know, we can do, so I just want to make sure the sport remains popular and offer any knowledge or anything that I can to, to contribute towards the game in the UK. All right, this is nothing but chain net. Wow. Look at the state of this. <laughs> yes, I mean, as you obviously see when coming into this court, it's in a sorry state. There's literally all kinds of rubbish everywhere. It's treated very badly because it because it is tucked away all right and it's, there's a lot of blind spots here there are certain courts that people use but these ones kind of get abandoned which is a real shame um, because this court here essentially changed my life so i always used to come down here regardless anyway whether it be on my bike uh, with friends going to the park or even me attempting to play football and i never knew this court was here uh, eventually i found out where this court was i started playing a bit of basketball and yeah, the hoops that they had, I was very young, I barely reached them, uh, but still come down and play anyway. A lot different than I remember, however, it's still roughly the same. Overgrown bushes, ball went over, we used to have to climb through there, there's not an inch of space over there, so we were always over there, the ball went over. The grounds. Wow. <laughs> The good thing about this court as well is is its location. I mean, I know it's tucked away within Alexandra Park. However, and um, what you've got just over there is the Mountbatten Centre. So that used to be a hotspot for basketball, um, sort of around the country. So we used to have, in the late 80s, one of the best teams in the country in the Portsmouth um, that were affiliated with Portsmouth Football Club. Uh, unfortunately, um, they cut ties. It was a money thing, and they went forward with football, not basketball. Um, so if you think back to, to that point, you know, that was a really busy place uh, where people were going to, to specifically watch basketball. Uh, I'd love to see that again, a professional team in this in this city. Jesus. <laughs> but the hoops are still here though, all right? And we've got nets, which is strange. But yeah, all this wall as well, just completely graffitied. These are all smashed up. As usual, we've got like a mattress or something over there. Um, less broken glass though than there used to be, which is good. Yeah, it's changed a lot. I've been here in years. When we transitioned over to College Park, uh, we'd be there every single day after school, um, every day at the weekend pretty much as well. And it made us better players because I was always playing against someone that was better than me. Um, I mean, if there was a game going on and it was like, say, five to six and we needed to be home for six, we'd always finish the game before we went home. We'd never just cut it short. Um, and we'd just work out our excuses when we got home and we just live with it. You know, I think there is potential still for this court. It's not done yet. I mean, it's got two hoops of nets. I mean, you don't really see that often. Uh, anyone who likes to play basketball likes to play basketball on a hoop with a net. Um, anyone who likes to play on a hoop without a net is... I don't really want to meet them, to be honest. I'm scared of them immediately. Pretty much, yeah. <laughs> Uh, so this is Orchard Park in Portsmouth. So this what once was a really rundown court uh, on the main road on one of the busiest streets in our city. Not a lot of people knew, even knew that this basketball court was here because no one really knew how to get into the court. What happened is I was speaking to um, a friend, well, who now, who's now a friend of mine who does um, these like artworks, like full scale artworks on basketball courts. And he likes one of the uh, t-shirt designs of Chain at Apparel. So sort of left a comment uh, on my Instagram page saying, oh, you know, we need to get this on a basketball court. In 2020, uh, I met a group called Form and Function. Um, where was that? That was at a market. And basically they saw, you know, what we was trying to do and they had ideas for the Fratton area. So originally this uh, court design was meant to be for a different basketball court. And because they had ideas for this area, we thought, you know, we put our heads together and um, create something down this end of the city. So yeah, on the um, opening day, so kicks off with the tournament, which is the 2v2 tournament. And yeah, I'm looking for that to be an annual, an annual thing. Uh, I think it's really important that in the summer that there's something that's going on uh, for basketball, especially in this city. Uh, it used to be a regular thing for me when I was younger. That's why I just want it to exist now. Um, I'm, I feel like I'm just kind of a middleman. It's not like I'm doing this because I feel like I need 
you know, praise or attention or anything like that. It's just something that I'm, I want to see. So rather than talk about it or moan about it, I just want to just actively be a part of making it actually happen. And the good thing about it is it's not only the basketball court that's been done, it's um, everything else. So we've obviously got new fencing, uh, surrounding walls and nice walkways, benches. Um, so in all, all in all, it's, you know, it's been kind of like win-win. The main thing is the result. So you drive past this court, it was always empty. Some people might just kick a football around in here. Some people knew that how to get into the basketball court if they were lucky enough. And the end result is uh, after the launch day, even though we, we had a you know, beautiful day, uh, sunshine, food, music, a tournament, uh, when all that finished, there was still probably about 20, 30 people here on the court and it sustained the numbers over the cold periods, like over the winter. It's, it's, it's been huge really for the city so far and um, I'm looking to get more involved with, you know, now it's summertime coming with some more tournaments. So on the, the opening day last year when we held the tournament, honestly, I couldn't imagine anything better. I mean, it was the last time it was sunny in this city. We had um, hip hop music, we had Jamaican food, and we had so many people here as well. And there were certain points during the day where I just had to stop and just have a look around. Like at one point, there was playing my favourite hip hop tune of all time whilst there was a basketball tournament going on. I honestly couldn't really believe that it was actually happening in Portsmouth. And at the same day, the Ports Portsmouth football were playing as well. So it was so busy, like down the street, everyone was just walking past, everyone was looking in. And it was just an unbelievable day. Um, what started off as a clothing uh, brand is now slowly moving into a different direction. So the idea was to always get people actively involved playing basketball. So now it's trying to do something more hands on where people are picking up a basketball and actually playing and um, I'll do what I can to help. All right, so this T-shirt in particular um, helps sort of um, transform the brand. So at first, I used to just put out T-shirts with just a logo on, very plain. Um, but I knew I wanted to eventually get to something that was a little bit more colorful. So when these came out, um, funny enough, I actually took initial photos down here at Orchard Park of what it used to look like. So it took it from, you know, something that was quite basic to, you know, what I really wanted it to look like. Here, this is the To The Hoop t-shirt. So this is the camp that used to be held here in Portsmouth. So they used to have two logos. Um, so I've got all permissions, for, et cetera, for the guys who used to run it. So just to sort of, um, for anyone who doesn't have their t-shirt anymore, because used to get a free t-shirt every, uh, every year, just wanted to put something out um, just for those guys to grab hold of something. But a lot of hard work went into this from my, a good friend of mine who used to attend as well. We used to play a lot of basketball together, still in touch. A uh, friend of mine, Tom, who also put together this. Uh, this is the first anniversary t-shirt. So I never really thought I'd make it past maybe a week. Um, when, I first, when I got my first batch of t-shirts, I really did, I did an event on the opening day and I was really shy about sort of letting everyone know about the brand, etc. I sold a couple, but when I went home, I was like, I really don't know how I'm going to shift all of these. And there were plenty of times I felt like giving up. So I wanted to celebrate the fact that I made it to a year. Then that led on to two years. So we made, then made this T-shirt. However, we actually put in some Easter eggs on the T-shirt. So meaning that um, there's some things in here. So if you own this T-shirt, I never actually said anything at the time but there is actually, these patterns actually mean something. So if you've got this t-shirt, there's loads of hidden meanings in there as well, all right? Oh, so we also put that into, into caps as well. Also as well, so I help local basketball club, which supports the basketball club. So I try and support them in any way that I can. Any purchases for this t-shirt go into the club. Um, just looking here, we've got one of these wristbands. I was actually at a Portsmouth game recently and I was sat next to someone who I've never seen before and it was wearing one, which I found really strange. So I felt the need to ask him, I was like, oh, where did you get that from? And his answer was, I stole it. I was like, okay. <laughs> these are from the tournament. So the same logo, which was made by uh, Projects in the Paint. So we had reversible jerseys for the guys on the day. So again, we're gonna look to go to work on putting a, together another tournament for this year. This is just a small handful of what I've got in the store at the minute, but um, yeah. So there's, de there's definitely a lot of people willing to play basketball. Uh, there's a lot of outdoor facilities, uh, but it's just trying to get them, if they want to pursue basketball, uh, getting them in the right direction. So um, obviously the introduction of 3x3 basketball is great. It's almost another pathway uh, in the same sport. 
and, and I, I want to be a part of that as well in the south. The overriding thing and the big thing for me is I want to be able, I want people to be able to train the correct way for basketball. Um, Orchard Park's great. Uh, this is, you know, this is fun as well. People can just come uh, and play and just have fun like they're doing now. Um, but I'd like something to be uh, bespoke to basketball players wanting to train and get better, almost like a gym. Outdoor spaces are like, you can't really put a price on how valuable they are. They're really important. They're literally the sort of gateway for someone to actually start playing basketball because it's really easy access. Um, you can come and train by yourself. All you needed to do is get a basketball and that's the first step. Um, yeah. That was, that was it for me. Uh, from there, then I found out where I could go to a session and then from there I joined the team and then from there it just kept, you know, it kept building and building. So it's kind of like the entry level is, you know, the initial outdoor basketball space. Basketball isn't a UK born sport. So it's obviously come from the US. It gets overlooked by other sports that are UK born, even if they're maybe not so popular. Um, I know that might upset a few people. However, if you've got a queue of people willing to play this sport but we're not giving them something in return and um, then something really sort of needs to be looked at um, all I'm really thinking of is you know a facility a basketball court that's open year round um, so at the minute if when it comes to exam season or half term a lot of basketball players can't get in and train and um, so if we want to progress we need to be able to you know use facilities and have specific training so uh, you know I'd love to see more you know, strength and conditioning coaches, more nutritionists around the game as well, just, you know, different roles. Um, and I think, you know, slowly but surely, you know, we'll, we'll get there. Um, and it's just taking little baby steps with things like this. And, and to be honest as well, up and down the country, people are doing their own little thing. And, you know, outside of, um, you know, Basketball England and the BBL, which is great because it's kind of keeping the sport of basketball alive in this country. So all I'm trying to do is my contribution, um, but I want to see people physically playing the game and getting better as well. The